Good morning students. Today we will discuss about crystal projections. In crystallography, it will be very convenient for us if we devise a mechanism by which the three-dimensional crystal is graphically represented on a planar surface in two dimension. What will be the best situation in this case will be the representation of the three dimensional object in two dimension with its angular relationships being reproducible. Herein comes the concept of crystal projection which is a quantitative method of projecting the two three dimensional crystal faces and its directions onto a two dimensional plane which bears a resemblance and reproducibility to what we see in a natural crystal or we observe in a crystal model. What actually happens in this graphical representation is that we have certain points or great circles or phases of crystals which are being projected on a planar manner in which the symmetry of the crystal is being depicted and each type of symmetry which is inherent in the, each of the crystal classes of the six crystal systems hence will be reproduced. In mathematics such kind of projections where angular relationships are maintained and in two dimension and can be reproduced are called as conformal projections and what that same type of projection which we do in crystallography is what is the stereographic projection. So what we have basically is let us define a crystal as such. Let us define a crystal which is in a cubic form. What is crystal faces? Crystal faces is nothing but these. When we have a crystal there are three dimensions. This is our A direction, A positive. This is A negative, B positive b negative and this is c positive and c negative. What we have here is three crystallographic axes. We have a axis, the b axis and the c axis which has on the topmost part the c positive in the coordinate and c negative in the lower coordinate. If we have a face like this, this is the face which I am shading. This is the face which is cutting the a axis at unit distance is parallel to the B axis and also cutting is parallel to the C axis. So this phase is marked as 1 0 0 phase. So likewise this will be 0 1 0 phase. This will be the phase on this side is 0 1 bar 0. The phase behind is 1 bar 0 0. The phase here will be 0 0 1 bar and this will be 0 0 one. So these are the faces which are oriented with a certain orientation with respect to the coordinate system. So if I want to plot this on a two dimension we also have to notice that the phase between 0 0 1 and 0 1 0 we have an angular relation which is almost 90 degree. First of all we measure this angular relationship. We can measure this angular relationship using equipments like goniometers and the contact goniometer is the one which is commonly used. Crystallographic projection or crystal projection is nothing but if we can project these into a planar face which is in two dimension and I can project this face on a planar surface. For instance, I can mark it as 0 1 0 phase or 0 0 1 phase whatever, whatever projection I can make out of these two, a two dimensional planar surface will be called as a crystal projection provided that we maintain the angular relationship between these in a reproducible format and also we can 
infer from seeing this diagram that the crystal may have this kind of a symmetry. The stereographic projection is a very ancient geometrical technique and it originated in the second century AD. The stereographic projection which we apply for crystallography was first applied in crystallography by Professor F. E. Neumann and was further developed by W. H. Miller. Here we will discuss about the principles of stereographic projection. In order to visualize how a stereographic projection is used in crystallography, let us imagine a crystal to be within the center of a sphere. Here what we have is a sphere marked in it are the north and south directions and within the center of the crystal in the point O we have placed a crystal. And if we draw a normal to the crystal plane, for instance, I have a crystal and from that if I substand a 90 degree line, which is the normal, it strikes the sphere at point P. And I should also let you know that this sphere is called as the sphere of projection. This point P which intersects the sphere is called as the plane of the pole of the plane or the face of the crystal and OP which is marked here is the normal. A direction similarly can be represented by a point on the surface of the sphere as the point where the line parallel to the given direction passing through the center of the sphere strikes the surface of the sphere. Similarly, a crystal plane can also be represented by drawing a parallel plane through the center of the sphere as you can see here. This is a parallel plane which we have drawn. Since the line passes through the center of sphere, we call these planes as diametral plane. This is one diametral plane, this is another diametral plane, this is another diametral plane. And the line of intersection of the sphere with such a diametral plane is what is called as a great circle. This is the this intersection line out here marked in solid line, out here it is marked in the dotted line which is behind the sphere. A great circle as such will have a radius equal to that of the sphere of projection. At this stage what we have is what we call as the spherical projection that is we have a crystal phase which is being directly subtended to the sphere and the point where this pole will be will be the sphere, spherical projection of the phase of the crystal which we are discussing. Then we have the diagram here where we have two poles. One is the pole P, one is the pole Q. Here also we have one sphere of projection. My crystal will be placed here and the angle subtended by these two normals is denoted by phi. Okay? And if I draw an arc joining these two phase poles over here in this sphere, what we, I will draw is also an arc of a great circle and that angle is same as that of the angle subtended by these two normals OP and OQ. This sort of a projection is also possible in spherical projection and if we do such kind of a projection still till this age what we are obtaining is a spherical projection. We have a crystal here which is directly subtended here. We have a crystal face here which is normal of which is subtended here and the angle between these two poles on the great circle will be equal to the angles subtended by the, these two normals. Here we have another sort of a spherical projection which I am showing you. It is almost like a terrestrial globe. What we have here is if I have to project, we have, I have projected two two-dimensional planes. One is passing through the north pole, one is passing through the equator. What we have here is the 
one equatorial plane my crystal will be placed here north r and south are the meridians which poles marked on the sphere there are actually various ways of projecting points on a sphere to a two dimensional plane as is being shown in this diagram first in the orthographic projection for instance for my face here i have a pole p which is projected from a point at infinity onto a plane parallel to the equatorial plane to form a p prime o point on the plane parallel to the equatorial plane passing through the north in the gonomic projection the point of projection at the center of the sphere giving the projected pole p prime z on a plane parallel to the equatorial plane passing through the north is what is we have the gonomic projection both these projections have their individual uses in crystallography the orthographic projection is useful for visualizing crystal shapes and the gonomic projection is relevant for labeling electron black scattered diffraction patterns which we obtain using scanning electron microscopes however neither of these projections is conformal that is the angles so projected are distorted in these projections in the beginning of the class itself we have discussed that a stereographic projection is a conformal projection that is the angles are not distorted between angles between faces or directions will not be distorted in case of stereographic projections so what we have in this diagram is for the pole p we have a normal to the plane which is normal to the plane os we have this here this plane can pass through any point in the north south if it passes through the north the point p projects as p prime s and the most convenient plane for our purpose will be the plane which is at the equator and so if we project this ps onto this equatorial plane it will plot on the point p and this point p is what is the stereographic projection for the plane x which is substanding a stereo spherical projection p and a stereographic projection p prime on the equatorial plane this equatorial plane or the diametral plane containing this point p is what is called as the primitive circle in case of a crystal projection here also we are uh, visualizing another method of projection as can be seen in this figure what we have is the same sort of a sphere of projection here we have marked in it our north and south pole we are representing the equatorial plane as a planar surface here will be our crystal which is subtending an angle p1 which is the no which is the normal to the face and this point p1 is the spherical projection this point p1 if i want to make it a stereographic projection will plot within the primitive circle and p1 prime is the stereographic projection for p1 point this is the case when we have our point or the pole plotting on the northern hemisphere provided that my crystal pole is plotting on the southern hemisphere if i directly substand my projection towards the sphere it will plot outside the sphere as can be seen that it is p prime 2 is outside the view outside the sphere this p2 prime is what we call as a two projection but if i plot this p2 prime onto the equatorial plane what will happen is that instead of plotting it in here i can substand it to the 
equatorial plane here and it will be p double prime 2. This shows the beauty of the stereographic projection. Whether I have a pole plotting on the northern hemisphere or a southern hemisphere, if I try to substand that to the equatorial plane, it will all lie within the primitive circle. But if I make a true projection from the southern hemisphere, it may also be the case that it will be plotting out of the field of this sphere. So, this illustrates you how clearly that whatever point will be there within the northern or the southern hemisphere can all be plotted on the equatorial plane and that is how the angular relationships also are maintained and we beautifully reproduce the crystal directions and its symmetries onto a two-dimensional plane. Apart from being angled true, you can also see in this diagram that the stereographic projection has a very useful second property as well. All the circles, whether it is the great circle or a small circle, or are all plotting on the sphere of projection as circles itself. This can be seen from this diagram. Whatever we are plotting will all be plotting as a circle only. The projections will all be circles. So, how do we do this projection? For this, the measurement and plotting of the angles on the stereographic projection has been made easier by using a template of the projected coordinate system which is called as a stereographic net as you can see here. This type of net is also known as Wolf net after G. V. Wolf, a Russian crystallographer. What we have in a Wolf net is what we can observe is that in the stereo net we have two directions which is one is the north pole and the other is the south pole which would plot directly above and below the center of the stereo net. Apart from this we have three different components as well. We have the primitive circle. It is the circle that surrounds the stereo net. Then we have the great circles. These are the great circles as marked here. These longitudinal lines. These are the curved lines that connect the points leveled north and south on the stereo net. The east to west and the north south axis are as well the primitive circles and also great circles. The angular relationship between the points can only be measured during, using the great circles. The small circles as marked here are the curved lines that curve upward on the or upward in the northern hemisphere and downward in the southern hemisphere in the stereo net. Let us here imagine that we have a crystal inside a sphere. From each crystal face we draw a line perpendicular to the face that is what is the poles to the face. We, let us define this phase as this, this phase as the 0, 1, 0 phase as having the phi angle of 0 degree, that is the angle here. For any other phase, the phi angle will be measured from the B axis in a clockwise direction, in the plane of the equator. We define the rho angle between the C axis and the pole of the face. C axis and the pole of the face. It is measured downward from the north pole of the sphere. In the figure we can observe that a crystal has a rho angle measured in the vertical plane containing the axis of the sphere and the face pole and the phi angle measured on the in the horizontal equatorial plane. So, it has a rho angle of 90 degree. 
a number of rules are applied for plotting crystal faces on a stereo net. First is that the all the crystal faces actually plots as poles. Then the B crystallographic axis as can be seen in the diagram is taken as the starting point. Such an axis will be plot, plotted at phi equal to 0 degree and rho equal to 90 degree. Positive phi angles will be measured clockwise and negative phi angles will be measured counterclockwise as can be seen in this diagram. Crystal faces that are on top of the crystal that is rho equal to 90 degree greater than 90 degree will be plotted as open circles and the crystal faces on the bottom that is rho equal to greater than 90 degree will be plotted with positive signs. For this we place a sheet of tracing paper on the stereo net and trace the outermost great circle make a reference mark on the right side of the circle that is towards the east and to plot a face we first measure the row angle along the outermost circle and make a mark on our tracing paper and next rotate the tracing paper so that the mark lies on the east west and then we measure the row angle. Now I will illustrate you the use of a stereo net or what we call as a wolf net. What we have here is a wolf net is a basic is a primitive circle which we observed in the stereographic projection. We have here marked here south pole and the north pole. The row angle is measured from this point on outwards and the phi angle is measured either this way or this way. Okay, here being plus 90 degree phi and here being minus 90 degree phi. So if I have to plot a plane which has a row of 60 degree and a phi angle of 30 degree, what I will do is the first step is to take the wolf net. Wolf net. I will first plot the wolf net wherein all the great circles will be marked like small circles are marked like this. Great circles are marked like this. And this is the north and the south. This is my wolf net. On top of it, I will plot my tracing paper. I will trace out this wolf net and I will produce a tracing of this marked as north and south here and here I have the east direction and the west direction. So this is how I am roughly making a diagram. So as I have to now count a phi angle of 30 degree, I will count from here say 10, 20 and 30 degree. What I will do after this is that the next step will be that I will have a diagram or the tracing sheet I will arrange with respect to the wolf net such that the phi angle 30 degree the which was marked here in this case with a say cross. This cross I will bring it to the east west wire. I will bring this here, this 30 degree is here now after rotating the tracing sheet. So this is the east west direction, this is the north south direction. What I will have here, now I will calculate my rho equal to 60 degree which will be from this point onwards 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So this will be the point which will be the phase with a row of 60 degree and the phi of 30 degree. This is the basic use which we apply for using a stereo net. Likewise, zones can also be plotted. So how do we find a zone of 
crystal faces. All the crystal faces which belong to a zone will all be plotting on one grid circle. So this will be one phase, this will be one phase, this will be one phase. And if they are all plotting on one grid circle, we know that these crystal faces must be belonging to a zone. Zone as in crystal faces which share parallel edges. So the applicability of stereo net keeps on increasing and for stereo projections of each crystal class as well, we can use the stereo net and can make stereographic projections. So to remind you all what so far we have studied, I will show you two diagrammatic representation of how two types of most important projections in crystal projections are considered. One we have the spherical projection, the other one we have the stereographic projection. Spherical projection for both the cases what we have is we consider a sphere of projection which we call as the sphere of projection sphere or projections. So for this case this is basically a globe. We have our crystal placed here. This is my east-west direction. This is my north-south direction. North-south, east-west. We are discussing spherical projection. This is my crystal face. This is my crystal within sitting here. So I have a face, this, which has say I mark it as the point O. This point here I will draw a normal to this and any point where say X where this line will intersect my sphere will be the spherical projection. For the other faces also likewise it can touch the sphere at certain points and those will be the spherical projection for that those crystal faces. For stereographic projection the story is different. We have this sphere of projection here also my crystal is sitting at the center. This is my east west extension. This is my north south extension. the point from the angle subtended or the normal subtended from my this face will plot here say x same x but I do not want it here because it will not reproduce my angular positions and also this is not a planar surface where we can project this so we will we want a planar projection so what I will consider is a equatorial plane this is a two-dimensional plane which can be like this. So I will project this point from that sphere onto this equatorial plane say X prime. So this is what is the stereographic projection. So the basic difference is illustrated clearly to you in the two diagrams. So what we have learned today in our class is about crystal projections. Crystal projections we learned that can be of two types. One where the angular relationships are not maintained for instance in orthogonal and gonomic projections. But for stereographic projections, the angular relationship between crystal directions and crystal faces are maintained. Hence, it is the most popular type of crystal projections which we adopt for making a three-dimensional projection of the crystals which we observe onto a two-dimensional plane. There is two steps to be followed when we are making a crystal projection. For each case we are considering that the crystal is sitting at the center of a sphere. If the rays emanating for instance if I make a hole from this crystal faces and I 
put a point source of light in that center of the crystal, wherever the light ray will touch the sphere's external surface, that will be the spherical projection. If that spherical projection is projected back to the equatorial plane of the sphere, those type of projection is what we call as the stereographic projection. In these, these projections find a lot of use not only to plot the poles of faces, but also for different crystal classes, we can make different symmetry arrangements which are possible in different classes can also be depicted through these stereographic projections. For normal plotting of faces, a template is already available which is the wolf net and its application I have shown you diagrammatically and I hope that you all learned today how to make a two dimensional representation of the three dimensional crystals which we observe usually in our day to day lives and also during our crystallography studies. Thank you.